Okay, so first question. What was your first cruise and what appealed to you about trying cruising for the first time? Goodness me, my first cruise was so many years ago um, and we were invited to go on the QE2, the old QE2. Um, and I thought, oh, well, I'm not sure this is going to really suit me. I absolutely didn't think it would suit my husband. And we also we had um, our daughter was about eight years old, I think. But we went off to the Canary Islands on the QE2 and we loved it. I think we loved it from the minute we got on board, quite honestly. Um, it was a whole revelation to us that there is space on these ships. Um, and you can be alone if you want, or you can socialise, and everything's at your fingertips. And there was a kids' club, uh, which Emma, our daughter, thoroughly enjoyed. Um, and I remember being on the QE2 and talking to other um, passengers, and they said um, they, this was their sort of 45th cruise or something. And I said, oh, come on, don't, don't be ridiculous. Um, I have now lost count of the number of cruises we have done, so we are completely sold on it. Yes, you do lose count. I know, I know that we have. Um, <laughs> so you are ambassador for Cruise Miles with ROL Cruise. What is it and why should people consider booking with ROL Cruise? Well, I've always found ROL to be so personal with their service and so helpful and I think you really need that because it's a big old world cruising there's an awful lot of choice out there and to have someone guide you through uh, someone who will see what your interests are and uh, what might suit you best I mean it, it can be almost tailor-made and they are incredibly helpful and incredibly expert at, at what they do and with cruise miles which I've been lucky enough to be an ambassador for for, for some years now um, you can upgrade your you can use it for parking, you can use it towards your next cruise. Um, it's, it's a loyalty scheme which I think people are really, really enjoying and, and finding the benefit of. Brilliant. Uh, in your cruise travels, have you visited a destination that felt particularly regal or connected to your experiences with the Royal Family? Well, I've travelled the world with the Royal Family over very, very, very many years, um, but I think when I went back to Africa um, on, it was a Cunard ship, I think it was Queen, Queen Elizabeth, I've been a couple of times on cruises there, um, it, was, it was so reminiscent for me of all that our late Queen uh, thought about Africa, the fact that she made her address when she was 21, um, her dedication um, for her life of duty in Cape Town. Um, and then when she went back in 1995, I was with her and um, I was invited on, on board Britannia. And she was so excited, the Queen, to be back. She said, it's been so many years and I love this continent. And um, there was a glint in her eye and an enjoyment of this royal tour um, that I didn't always see or, or, on other um, tours that she did. So for me, um, Africa always made me think of our late queen. Um, what are your tip, top tips for travellers looking to experience the luxury and exclusivity akin to royal travel? Do you know, I often find that I, I'm saying, gosh, I feel like a queen when I'm on board because um, I get treated like a queen. And I mean, it's not just me. Everyone really gets treated like royalty on board. I mean, how often do you have a butler? Uh, in my case, never. Uh, but on board, you have very often, if you're lucky enough, you have a butler. Everything is done for you. Everything's at your fingertips. Uh, it seems to me most of the people on board who so beautifully look after us. They just can't do enough. Um, they're, they're such lovely, lovely people. Um, and then there's the food and there's the wine and there's, uh, there's the entertainment. I mean, what, co what more could, could you want, even if you were real royalty? What's the best dish you've ever eaten on a cruise ship? <laughs> I have had some wonderful, wonderful food on, on board ships. Um, I love the seafood, and there's a lot of very good seafood restaurants. I mean, the Michelin star restaurants there as well now, um, or at least Michelin chefs. Um, for me, I think it takes a lot to beat uh, Chateaubriand done at the side of your table, finished at the, at the side, of, side of your table by the maitre d'. I mean, it's, it's a whole performance, yeah. <laughs> and it's very lovely. When you book a cruise, do you place more emphasis on the ship or the destination? When we were younger, I think it was always the destination that we looked at first and then found which ships were going there. 
Um, as you get older, I think it is the, the haven of your particular favorite ships that you look for, and you wonder where they're going that year. Um, and you know it may be that you've been on, on some of those, to some of those ports before, but you know that you've got your lovely hotel ship there. That, that, that's, that's the real true enjoyment, I think. Could you share an instance where you felt a deep connection to a destination's culture or history during a cruise? For me, Australia always, it's kind of magical. Um, I, I, I get bound up in, in the history of the Abor Aboriginal people there. And I remember joining, um, I think it was a Cunard ship in, in Darwin. Um, and we combined that with actually seeing some of Australia. In fact, we took the Garn Railway from Darwin, Darwin straight through Australia down to Adelaide. Um, and it was a fantastic experience. And then to, to fly back and, and join the ship and, and cruise around uh, that fantastic continent. Um, I, I love it and I, I love to learn. I, the, in Darwin, there's a sort of a pioneering feel ab about it. I mean, it's not, it's not that old a, a settlement, I suppose. Um, and it just seems, um, I was going to let the Wild West, or it's the Wild North, the Northern Territory. It's fascinating. So it's worth the jet lag? It is worth a jet lag, yeah, you soon get over it. <laughs> How has your perception of travel and its importance changed since becoming Cruise Miles Ambassador? Well, I think being an ambassador for Cruise Miles, it, it, it has, uh, I think being an ambassador for Cruise Miles has led me very happily to take different experiences. Uh, for example, um, we went to Antarctica, which um, I just, never expected to go there, especially sort of quite late in life. And my husband is older than me. I thought, oh my gosh, he'll never want to go. And I said, you know, oh, do, you want to, do you want to see Antarctica? And he said, are you joking? Um, and so we went there on a Hurtigruten ship. Um, and that was a whole other world. Well, literally it is a whole other world. Um, and uh, I, I just thought it was something I would never see. Um, and it's something that will live with us, both my husband Jim and myself, just forever. Mm. To, you, you hear about Antarctica, but to experience it, to feel the cold, to smell the penguins, yeah. um, to step where not that many other people have stepped, uh, it's fabulous. One of my parents' favorite cruises with, was with uh, Hertie Gruton, and uh, they had dinner, they, their table was sat next to this couple from Britain and they didn't realise it was expedition and they were complaining the whole time that there was no theatre entertainment <laughs> and they weren't a casino. And <laughs> well, that's the, great, that's the great thing about cruising. There are so many different experiences. Yeah. And if you go to on a, um, an excursion ship like, like yeah. Hertie Gruten, you, 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 don't, uh, you don't get the, the luxury, although it was, it was very beautiful. I mean, the food was fabulous, everything was fine, but you haven't got the great big cabin. You feel like a real, um, you, you're, explore, you're like an explorer. Yeah, they said that. There might not have been the variety of food, but they could tell that everything was well cooked and the ingredients were very fresh. And yeah, I know. It was like delicious. Um, what do you find most rewarding about introducing people to new, new destinations and experiences through cruising? I think particularly as you get older, it's quite easy to become very complacent with your surroundings. I mean, if you're lucky enough, you've, uh, you know, you've got things as you want, you've settled down into your, your lovely house or whatever, if you're lucky enough. Um, and it takes a bit to get you out again. Um, and I think you must resist that complacency. And so I, I think that um, by cruising, you can still have the luxury, but you, every morning you open the curtains, oh, there's somewhere else has come to see me. Um, and I love that experience of, of new places coming to visit you with so little trouble. You've been wined and dined and there you are in a new place. And I think that really is important as you grow older to keep that sense of discovery, of curiosity. Curiosity about the world, this fantastic huge world. Um, and that's what I think cruising can give you. Is there a particular cruise or destination you're really looking forward to? 
I always love to go to the Caribbean. It's one of my favorite places in the world. And I think actually on a cruise ship, you get to see so many of the islands. And you, if you go on a, a small ship, um, you can see some very tiny islands and some little harbors that the, the big cruise ships can't get into. And I love that. I'm also looking forward very much to seeing the new Cunard ship, Queen Anne. And uh, we're gonna spend a night on board very shortly. So that's my next, that's, that's the next ship I'm going for. I don't think we're actually going to be much of a destination for in oh. one night. <laughs> um, can you share an experience where travel has significantly impacted your perspective or understanding of the world? Well, I think that would be Antarctica again, actually. Antarctica was just so completely different. Um, I also think that Southeast Asia is a, is a place that uh, I think we could learn a lot more about. Um, I mean, if you go to India, uh, for example, the, the vibrancy, the noise, the numbers of people, the way many people have to live, sadly, uh, does open your eyes to how very, very lucky you are. So on a cruise union, you might go out and you might go to some really poor areas on, on a an excursion um, and hopefully bring them a little bit of, of money um, as tourists and, and then you go back to your your wonderful luxurious ship and then back to your life and you think wow you know I'm very fortunate to live where I do. Um, what advice would you give someone who's considering their first cruise? I always tell people who are thinking about cruising and who are sort of not quite sure, I say, do it, experience it. Um, maybe choose a short cruise, first of all, um, see what you think of it. Um, and I can almost guarantee you're gonna love it, unless you're completely unsociable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and even if you're unsociable, um, I, I always tell people there are many, many private areas, there are cozy corners where you can sit um, just with your husband or a partner um, have a game of cards. My husband and I are often on um, a, a large cruise ship um, and then we go after dinner and we, we play cards and maybe have a brandy or something, listen to someone playing the cello or the piano. And we say, where is everyone? You know, we're all literally all alone because <laughs> some people are having um, their, their meal a little later than us. Others are in the theatre, others are in the ballroom dancing, they're in the casino. Um, and, and we do have space to ourselves. So that's, that's a sort of illusion people um, uh, have, a misapprehension people have. So do you prefer a big ship or a smaller trip, a ship? And I like, you know, I like all ships. I love all ships. I mean, the big ships have so many incredible things on, you know. I, mean, I think one has the dodgems on, there was ice, there are ice rinks, aren't there? There are climbing walls that go right up almost into the clouds, um, surf pools, all that. I mean, that was all very, very exciting. Um, but given the choice, I think uh, nowadays, uh, I prefer a slightly smaller ship, partly because if you, you know, you leave your handbag in, in your cabin, it's not quite so far to walk to get it again. Um, and I like the, the, perhaps the coziness of the slightly smaller ships, but honestly, I'll, uh, give me a cruise, I'll go on it. Hypothetical question, they can be dead or alive. In your opinion, which member of the royal family would enjoy a cruise? Well, I know that uh, our late Queen, Queen Elizabeth, uh, very much enjoyed her summer cruise up to the Western Isles. Um, August the 4th was the Queen Mother's birthday, and I would always be outside Clarence House um, reporting on that, and the Queen would go for lunch there. Um, and then we all knew that really as soon as she could afterwards, the next couple of days, uh, she would board Britannia, Britannia, the royal yacht, now no longer, um, and they would sail as a family up um, through to the Western Isles of Scotland. Uh, the Queen Mother would fly up to her castle, Castle of May, and they would meet at Scrabster, uh, a little port, and uh, have a picnic or something, and then the Queen would carry on with her, her cruise. So she very much enjoyed, I think it was her haven, of getting away from, from the world and the crowds and life as a Queen. Yeah. Um what are the most common misconceptions people have about cruising and how do you address them? I think people imagine that on a cruise you are going to be surrounded by lots of people that you may not want to be surrounded by. Um, 
on balance, I think that's probably untrue. I think you'll actually find everyone's pretty like-minded. Um, but you don't have to be one of the throng. You can be in the privacy of your own cabin, your own balcony, if you're lucky enough to have a balcony. And very, very many ships now do have balconies. Um, so I think people need to know that there's, um, there's time to be alone, there's time to mix. Um, and also, um, that it's not just one thing a cruise. It could be there are a multitude of different cruises, all um, satisfying different groups of society. Um, and then it's not just ocean cruising, there's river cruising, which I don't know a lot about. I've only been on one. That's something I want to do, another river cruise. Um, because that was a revelation. What a revelation! Um, because there's so much to see on a river cruise. You've got two sides. It's, it's like double the experience instead of you know sailing across the ocean to an island or to a country. You've got something on each side almost through th throughout the voyage. Um, and, um, and again, great luck and a, a great deal of cultural input, some wonderful learning to be done about the, the cities and places that you're passing. Is there a particular cruise line you're eager to try? Ooh, well, there are lots of cruise lines I'd like to try. <laughs> yes. And people are very kind and, and, and suggesting. So it's trying to, to um, cram them all in. Um, I mean, I think... Um, Oh, I don't know. Uh, regions would be nice. Um, I do. I do quite like luxury. Yes. yes <laughs> uh, finally, can you share a story with our readers which has a special meaning to you, which has significantly influenced your life, which led to your career? <laughs> I think probably the thing that changed my life more than anything. Well, the two things. One was I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. But that was much later on, because people got a different perception of me. Um, but very, very early on, when I was just um, oh, 19, 20, I proved that I am a disaster as a teacher. Because that's what I thought I'd be, a teacher. Um, and I went to be an assistante de lycée in, in the south of France. Um, so I was teaching young people to uh, speak English. And I was terrible at it. I was so bad. I had no authority whatsoever. So I came back. It was also exhausting. Um, I thought, well, I can't do that. And so I became a journalist because uh, a friend of mine had become a journalist. So I became a reporter and that led to the BBC. The BBC eventually led to radio to television, television to someone asking me to be a royal correspondent. And being royal correspondent got me a little bit of fame. And a little bit of fame led ROL Cruise to invite me to um, be ambassador for Cruise Miles. Bingo! Yeah. <laughs> <There you are. laughs> yes. Well, Jenny, thank you very much. Pleasure. <laughs>